The historicity of Jesus concerns whether Jesus of Nazareth, born c. 72 BC, existed as a historical figure, whether the episodes portrayed in the Gospels can be confirmed as historical events as opposed to myth, legend, or fiction, and the weighing of the evidence relating to his life. One of the chief problems confronting scholars interested in the historicity of Jesus is that there are no contemporary records of his life or existence. Like many other historic figures of antiquity, all records of his historicity come from one or more generations after his death. The earliest source being that found in the epistles of Paul dated to AD 59, who reported on his crucifixion. Other sources such as that of Josephus or Tacitus date even later. Historians interested in the historicity of Jesus are confronted by discussing the nature of these historic records and the intention and points of view of their authors. Although there is near-universal consensus among scholars that Jesus existed historically, biblical scholars differ about the beliefs and teachings of Jesus as well as the accuracy of the details of his life that have been described in the Gospels. While scholars have sometimes criticized Jesus' scholarship for religious bias and lack of methodological soundness with very few exceptions, such critics do support the historicity of Jesus and reject the theory that Jesus never existed, known as the Christ myth theory. Certain scholars, particularly in Europe, have recently made the case that while there are a number of plausible Jesuses that could have existed, there can be no certainty as to which Jesus was the historical Jesus and that there should also be more scholarly research and debate on this topic. The historicity of Jesus is distinct from the related study of the historical Jesus which refers to scholarly reconstructions of the life of Jesus, based primarily on critical analysis of the Gospel texts. Historicity, by contrast as a subject of study different from history proper is concerned with two different fundamental issues. Firstly it is concerned with the systemic processes of social change, and secondly what was the social context and intentions of the authors of the sources by which we can establish the truth of historical events, separating mythic accounts from factual circumstances. Since the 18th century, scholars have attempted to reconstruct the life of the historical Jesus developing historical critical methods for analyzing the available texts. The only sources are documentary, in conjunction with biblical texts such as the Pauline Epistles and the Synoptic Gospels. Three passages in non-Christian works have been used to support the historicity of Jesus, two in the writings of the Jewish historian Josephus and one from the Roman historian Tacitus. Although the authenticity of all three has been questioned, and one is generally accepted as having been altered by Christians, most scholars believe they are at least partially authentic. Historical reliability of the Gospels Some scholars state that little in the four canonical Gospels is considered to be historically reliable. Almost all scholars of antiquity agree that Jesus existed but scholars differ on the historicity of specific episodes described in the biblical accounts of Jesus. The only two events subject to almost universal assent are that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist and was crucified by the order of the Roman prefect Pontius Pilate. Elements whose historical authenticity is disputed include the two accounts of the nativity of Jesus the miraculous events including the resurrection, and certain details about the crucifixion. According to the majority viewpoint, the Synoptic Gospels are the primary sources of historical information about Jesus and of the religious movement he founded. These religious Gospels, the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Mark, and the Gospel of Luke, written in the Greek language, recount the life, ministry, crucifixion and resurrection of a Jew named Jesus, who spoke Aramaic. There are different hypotheses regarding the origin of the texts because the Gospels of the New Testament were written in Greek for Greek-speaking communities that were later translated into Syriac, Latin and Coptic. The fourth Gospel, the Gospel of John, differs greatly from the first three Gospels. 
Historians often study the historical reliability of the Acts of the Apostles when studying the reliability of the Gospels, as the Book of Acts was seemingly written by the same author as the Gospel of Luke. Historians subject the Gospels to critical analysis by differentiating authentic, reliable information from possible inventions, exaggerations, and alterations. Since there are more textual variants in the New Testament than it has letters, scholars use textual criticism to determine which gospel variants could theoretically be taken as original. To answer this question, scholars have to ask who wrote the gospels when they wrote them, what was their objective in writing them, what sources the authors used, how reliable these sources were, and how far removed in time the sources were from the stories they narrate or if they were altered later. Scholars can also look into the internal evidence of the documents, to see if, for example, the document is misquoting texts from the Hebrew Tanakh. Finally, scholars turn to external sources, including the testimony of early church leaders, writers outside the church who would have been more likely to have criticized the church, and to archaeological evidence. Events generally accepted as historical, there is widespread disagreement among scholars on the details of the life of Jesus mentioned in the Gospel narratives, and on the meaning of his teachings, and the only two events subject to almost universal assent are that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist and was crucified by the order of the Roman prefect Pontius Pilate. According to New Testament scholar James Dunn, nearly all modern scholars consider the baptism of Jesus and his crucifixion to be historically certain. He states that these two facts in the life of Jesus command almost universal assent and rank so high on the almost impossible to doubt or deny scale of historical facts they are obvious starting points for an attempt to clarify the what and why of Jesus' omission. John P. Meyer views the crucifixion of Jesus as historical fact and states that based on the criterion of embarrassment Christians would not have invented the painful death of their leader. The criterion of embarrassment is also used to argue in favor of the historicity of the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist as it is a story which the early Christian church would have never wanted to invent. Based on this criterion, given that John baptized for the remission of sins and Jesus was viewed as without sin, the invention of this story would have served no purpose and would have been an embarrassment given that it positioned John above Jesus. Amy Jill Levine has summarized the situation by stating that there is a consensus of sorts on the basic outline of Jesus' life in that most scholars agree that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist and over a period of one to three years debated Jewish authorities on the subject of God, gathered followers, and was crucified by Roman prefect Pontius Pilate who officiated 2636 Ad. There is much in dispute as to his previous life, childhood, family and place of residence, of which the canonical Gospels are almost completely silent. Scholars attribute varying levels of certainty to other episodes. Some assume that there are eight elements about Jesus and his followers that can be viewed as historical facts, namely, Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. He called disciples. He had a controversy at the temple. Jesus was crucified by the Romans near Jerusalem. Jesus was a Galilean. His activities were confined to Galilee and Judea. After his death his disciples continued. Some of his disciples were persecuted. Scholarly agreement on this extended list is not universal. The Mishnah may refer to Jesus and reflect the early Jewish traditions of portraying Jesus as a sorcerer or magician. Other references to Jesus and his execution exist in the Talmud, but they aim to discredit his actions, not deny his existence. Since the 18th century, three separate scholarly quests for the historical Jesus have taken place, each with distinct characteristics and based on different research criteria, which were often developed during that phase. The portraits of Jesus that have been constructed in these processes have often differed from each other.
and from the dogmatic image portrayed in the Gospel accounts. Currently modern scholarly research on the historical Jesus focuses on what is historically probable or plausible about Jesus. The mainstream profiles in the third quest may be grouped together to based on the primary theme as apocalyptic prophet, charismatic healer, cynic philosopher, Jewish messiah and prophet of social change, but there is little scholarly agreement on a single portrait, or the methods needed to construct it. There are, however, overlapping attributes among the portraits, and scholars who differ on some attributes may agree on others. While there is widespread scholarly agreement on the existence of Jesus and a basic consensus on the general outline of his life, the portraits of Jesus constructed in the quests have often differed from each other and from the image portrayed in the Gospel accounts. There are overlapping attributes among the portraits, and while pairs of scholars may agree on some attributes, those same scholars may differ on other attributes, and there is no single portrait of the historical Jesus that satisfies most scholars. Nearly all modern scholars of antiquity, which is the majority viewpoint, agree that Jesus existed and most biblical scholars and classical historians see the theories of his non-existence as effectively refuted. There is no evidence today that the existence of Jesus was ever denied in antiquity by those who opposed Christianity. Jeffrey Blaney notes that a few scholars argue that Jesus did not even exist, and that they rightly point out that contemporary references to him were extremely rare. Christ myth theory The Christ myth theory is the proposition that Jesus never existed, or if he did, he had virtually nothing to do with the founding of Christianity and the accounts in the Gospels. This theory has very little support among current scholars. Historically, however, mythicist viewpoints were noted to varying degrees within academia and some even became part of the mainstream scholarship, such as the viewpoint of David Strauss. The theory enjoyed brief popularity in the Soviet Union, where it was supported by Sergei Kovalev, Alexander Kajdan, Abram Ranovich, Nikolai Rumyantsev, Robert Whipper and Yuri Franziev. Later, however, several scholars, including Kajdan, had retracted their views about a mythical Jesus and by the end of the 1980s the support for the theory became almost non-existent in Soviet academia. In his book, On the Historicity of Jesus, why we might have reason for doubt, Richard Carrier argues that the euhemerism of the mystical Jesus is a likely explanation of the myth of Jesus.